from an evil monstrous Santa Claus to hungry Portuguese ghosts. Here are 10 monsters of Christmas legends. Germanic folklore, Krampus is sort of like the evil twin of Father Christmas. Whereas Father Christmas would visit good children and reward them, Krampus would visit bad children and punish them. Often described as the horned god of the witches, Krampus is demonic in appearance. He is depicted with chains around him, a failed attempt to imprison him. Naughty children would be beaten by Krampus, and if necessary, he would call in a witch to finish the job. In some parts of Europe, December the 5th is celebrated as Krampus night. People get drunk, dress up as Krampus, and attack passers-by with sticks. Icelandic culture features many mythical creatures, but my favourite are the Yule Lads. The Yule Lads are a group of Santa Claus-like figures who place objects into children's shoes. There are 13 different Yule Lads, and each are known by their individual names and behaviour. The one known as Meat Hook uses his metal hook to steal meat, and the other names aren't any more creative. Door Slammer slams doors. Window Peeper watches people through their windows. Stubby has short stubby legs, and Candle Stealer stalks young children. The whole time he waits for the opportunity to steal their candles. In the last 13 nights before Christmas Day, each of the Yule Lads arrive in Icelandic towns one by one. In Germanic paganism, the goddesses Perchta and Holda were known as the guardians of the beasts. They would appear during the 12 days of Christmas and oversee the festivities. Perchta is described as an old hag-like woman with one overgrown foot. It wasn't a human foot, but that of a swan. She would wander the Bavarian countryside and enter homes where young children live. For well-behaved children, she would give a silver coin. For poorly behaved children, she would cut them open, remove their stomach, and stuff them with straw. Holder was quite different. She would never harm humans. She would travel great distances to share a meal with them. Black Peter is a shocking character from Dutch folklore. He is one of Saint Nicholas's companions and his main servant. It's obvious where his name comes from, but he is said to come from Spain, where he linked up with Saint Nick and he gave him a job. On the night of December the 5th, Dutch cities have big parades to welcome the arrival of Black Peter. In the 21st century, a man in blackface and big fake lips is always going to cause some controversy, so an awful lot of people hate Black Peter. An Italian Christmas monster is Befana. In local folklore, Befana is descended from the Roman goddess Strenia. She is an immortal creature who first emerged a few days before the birth of Jesus. Her child had recently died, and the loss had driven her insane. When word of Jesus' birth spread, she set out to find him. Deluded by her madness, she believed Jesus was her child, and she still believes that. So every Christmas, she enters people's homes looking for him. On her way, she leaves gifts for other children, but she attacks anyone who looks her in the face. It's important to remember she is insane. In Portugal, there is a tradition called the Con Soda. On Christmas morning, a large feast is thrown. People dedicate the feast to their ancestors. And get this, they invite their dead relatives to join them. Extra plates of food are laid out just in case hungry ghosts are present. Our next monster has a name that I'm not even going to try and pronounce. It's a short, goat-footed, goblin-like creature. These creatures live underground, and only appear above ground around Christmas, and only ever at night. They eat frogs and rats, and cause mischief for humans to discover when they wake up. So people would employ many methods to avoid having these creatures enter their home. The most common method was to leave a fire burning in your fireplace. The fire reminds them of the underworld, 
and scares them off. Another method was to leave something shiny on your doorstep. It will confuse their tiny brains and distract them until the morning. They have their origin in Greek mythology. According to legend, while underground they spend their time soaring at the wild tree. The wild tree connects our world to others. Its branches connect earth to the heavens, and its roots connect to the underworld. According to legend, there is an ogress who lives in the Icelandic mountains. She is called Gryla, and she is the Yule Lad's mother. Whereas her children just cause minor mischief, she eats people. More specifically, she eats badly behaved children. She would only ever leave her cave at Christmas, and using her abilities, would creep into the bedrooms of children and drag them away with her. Back in her cave, she cooks them in a child stew, which is of course her favorite meal. She has over 70 children of her own, who obey their mother as they know what can happen. There are old tales of angry mobs getting together and searching for her cave, but no human could ever find it. Belsnickel is a scruffy fur-clad character in German folklore. Like many others on this list, he seems to like beating children, and he carries a switch to do this with. A switch is a flexible wooden rod used for corporal punishment. Belsnickel wears a fur coat and face mask, and is said to have an unusually long tongue. Hans Trap is somewhat similar to Krampus. He also accompanies Saint Nicholas, and also delivers punishment to badly behaved children. The story goes that he was once a regular person, but a devil worshipper, and for that he was excommunicated from the church. Rejected by society, he lived alone in the woods, where he would dress as a scarecrow and scare children. Eventually, the isolation drove him insane, and he started kidnapping children. Just before he was able to kill a young boy, he was struck by a bolt of lightning, and died. But now, for some reason, he travels around with Father Christmas, 